Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pathfinding with A-Star video series brought to you by 3dbuzz.com. My name is Jason Busby, and joining me, we've got Mr. Logan Frank. Logan is going to be the lead instructor in this video series. How's it going today, Logan? No, it's going good. Excellent. Well, before I turn things over to you to explain what it is that we'll be taking a look at, I wanted to spend just a minute and talk about how this project is actually part of the AI series that we have at 3D Buzz. It's an ongoing series where we are creating various training videos covering different topics within the AI world, if you will. Now, we have already completed the introduction to the behavior systems uh, video series, and this project right here acts as a continuation from that series. In a few minutes, I will have Logan spend just a second and talk about some of the key things that you will need to have in place if you wish to follow along with this training video, but you have not followed nor seen the Introduction to Behavior Systems. Now, of course, we recommend that you make sure you've watched the Introduction to Behavior Systems because at the very end of this training series, we'll take the last few videos and we will put together a semi-practical example of using the path navigation system that we put together just so that you can see it in action. Uh, as a matter of fact, in just a second, Logan's going to demonstrate that. But the key element of this series is to teach you how the pathfinding algorithms work. I mean, we've got a few different ones that we're going to see as we work our way towards the use of a star. So with that, Logan, let me turn it over to you to spend just a second talking about what pathfinding is and then what it is we're going to be putting together. Okay. The idea that we're trying to, to get at in this entire series is pathfinding using the A star algorithm. Now, in order to tackle this project, we're actually going to be looking at three main sections. The first of these is simply to establish the idea of a navigation network, regardless of the algorithm used to transverse it. So the first part of the series is going to focus on building node graphs, representing them visually, and constructing an editor which will allow us to quickly work with these node graphs. From there, we will progress into the actual algorithm design for the A-star pathfinding algorithm. So we'll go through step by step from the ground up how we build this type of tree search algorithm. Once we get these elements in place, we will move on to the final part of the series where we put together a practical example using everything we've learned to create an actual game demo that allows us to have a player, an enemy, and state-driven behavior where the enemy is able to use the navigation network. So before we bring up a demonstration, what exactly is pathfinding? Well, pathfinding is simply a means of navigation where an AI-based component can navigate a level that would normally only be navigable by humans using a means of a path node or otherwise based network, okay. basically a, a node graph. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is pathfinding can be used for so much more beyond just navigating around an actual level. I'd like to point out for those of you that are watching this video that we're going to keep things focused to that very particular aspect. So it's all going to be about how do we get from point A to point B and um, what's involved with coming up with the how do we get between those two points. But just keep in mind, there are so many different uses that pathfinding is excellent uh, to solve problems for. And I recommend taking a little bit of time and searching the Internet and taking a look at some of the different uh, means in which pathfinding can be uh, applied to. So, Logan, let's go ahead and show them what it is that by the end of this video they'll have created. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. We're jumping directly to the final aspect of this project, and that is the game demo. If we load our project, what we're presented with is a level graphic set in the background of our game. We have two visible elements. We have a player character that we can move around. That's the green triangle, and we can move that freely with a gamepad controller. We have another element of the game, and that is the enemy character. And at the moment, his job is simply to wander around the level. You can see we have a readout saying what our enemy state currently is. So at the moment, the enemy is wandering the level randomly. However, he is using a path node network to navigate it. As you can see, he is avoiding all of the walls as he navigates. Now, to put things in perspective of an actual game, we have added some states to our enemy. We have this white-looking halo effect around the enemy itself, and this is our enemy's sight radius. 
the moment we as a player enter the site radius, the enemy will begin chasing us. So if we enter the site radius, we can see that our enemy state changed to seek player. And now wherever we go, the enemy chases us. So if we try to hide up here in this corner, the enemy will navigate around the wall and follow us. Now for the purposes of the demo, we're allowed to walk through walls while the enemy has to stay on the path network. So you can see that the enemy has, made, has been forced to make all the necessary turns to find us. Now if we stay still and let the enemy catch us, the moment the enemy collides with our character, we assume that we have done some devastating blow to the enemy and we force him to seek out a health power-up. The moment he finds the health power-up, he goes back into the wandering state. If he happens to find us and then catch us, the simulation begins over again, where the health spawns and the enemy has to find that health power-up. So again, this is the practical demo that we need to put together. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the technical aspects of this demo. If I hit a key on the keyboard, we can enable the debug information for our node network. So now you can see all of the nodes and their connections that we have established using an editor that we created earlier in this project, or rather we'll be showing as we go through this project. You can see that we have established a node network of connected path nodes, and we also have debug information being drawn around these nodes showing how our AI character is using them. We have a series of colored nodes that represent the path he's actually using. We have a series of orange nodes that represent the ones he has tried. And again, the meaning of all of these colorations is made clear when we describe the algorithm itself. This is simply showing the nodes that have been considered and their various costs associated with those nodes. So you can see that we do have a lot of information available to us about exactly how this process is working. So really that's the uh, that's the demo in a nutshell. Again, we'll be covering things such as the basics of how we form this path node network. We'll be building ed an editor which will allow us to edit node networks as you see here. And we'll be assembling the algorithm that will be used to transverse the network. Excellent. Let's go ahead and close the demo, Logan. And now for those of you that have not seen the introduction to behavior systems, let's spend just a second and talk about the things that they have to have to be able to follow along with the construction of everything from the editor to having actual paths that an actor can navigate but not including the, the very end final practical example because that does indeed require having the behavior system and everything in place. Exactly. If you're wanting to get started with this video series without having access to the classes of the previous behavior demo, the one key thing that you're going to need to have in place is a base actor class. As we progress through this series, um, as we're looking at the algorithm and the node networks, those lessons are almost standalone. All of the concepts, all of the math, all of the logic in those are completely standalone in nature. The only thing that we are requiring as a prerequisite is an actor class to build from. The node class itself descends from actor, and this is primarily to achieve positional information. We also need a collection of all of the nodes, and we are leveraging the fact that all actors are given a collection. So if you are wanting to start off fresh and work your way through the AI project, you'll need to establish a base actor class. That actor class will have to contain a collection of all actors. We've put together an actor list in this case. And you'll need a position. Now in addition to this position, once we get things actually working and moving around the screen, we are also incorporating a radius. So you'll need to contain some type of radius information. Now we'll just take a brief look at some of the things that are going on. Um, the way we're managing actors in our collection is we are adding them the moment they get instantiated. So within their constructor, we simply have a reference back to the static actors list where we auto automatically register ourselves into that collection. Now the remaining methods are really more up to you as to exactly how you would like your own actors to work. The last thing I'll point out is the fact that we are drawing our actors using uh, directional rotation. So we have a rotation calculated based on the way the actors are facing. Now again, this is optional depending on the actors that you'll have. A non-directional actor would work perfectly fine for the purposes of the node demo. So again, just wanted to point out the actor class that we have in place here 
as this would make the necessary starting point to work your way through these videos. Exactly. Very good. So with that, Logan, I'm going to let you just take over and get the project rolling. And ladies and gentlemen, viewing this video, I will be joining you a little bit later on to discuss some of the theory behind how one goes about using an algorithm to solve a path. With that, thank you guys very much, and let's get started.